Alberta is the fourth largest province in Canada, occupying a total area of 661,848 square kilometers. As of 2020, Alberta has a population of approximately 4.4 million people. Its absolute location is 53.93 degrees north and 116.58 degrees west, and is the westernmost prairie province. Geologic History the landscape of northern Alberta and the underlying mineral formations are the result of millions of years of geologic events. This time period is one of the most influential processes in Alberta's geology. Now let's dive a little deeper down the history of Alberta's geologic structure. Beginning in the Paleozoic era, roughly 600 million years ago, it was the deposition and decay of the remains of Earth's first skeletal animals, which led to the immense formation of limestone over the Canadian Shield. In the Jurassic period, about 150 million years ago, a mass of land rose to form an immense freshwater swamp. This uplift of land gradually spread to Alberta, creating vast deltas and swamps from what had been shallow ocean floors. The transition to land was completed 120 million years ago, marking the last time the Pacific waters would brush the lands of Alberta. During the late Jurassic to mid-Cretaceous periods, a mountain range emerged on the west coast of British Columbia. As the coast mountains rose, Alberta and the Mackenzie River Valley sank, allowing the Arctic Ocean to migrate south until it crossed into northern Alberta. Rock Types in Alberta, there are three main types of rocks, sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic. In the Precambrian era, the Rocky Mountains mainly consisted of metamorphic rocks. After it eroded in the early Mesozoic era, it left extensive deposits of sedimentary rocks. Landforms The movement of the Earth's plates and the resulting folding, faulting, and volcanic activity have combined with the forces of erosion and weathering to create a variety of landscapes that affect the way we live. From this image, it is clear that Alberta has three different landform regions, the Western Cordillera, the Canadian Shield, and the Interior Plains, which covered the majority of the province. The interior plains are essentially just flatlands with very deep, fertile soil, thus producing an extensive amount of wheat. This is how it earned its nickname as Canada's breadbasket. It was created when sediments from the Shield and the Rocky Mountains were deposited in shallow inland seas and compressed into layers of sedimentary rock. Climate Alberta has a continental climate, receiving more sunshine than any other Canadian province. The winters are dry, sunny, and cold. However, summers are warm and wet. Alberta is in four climate regions, Taiga, Boreal, Cordilleran, and Prairie. Using Lowern, I am now going to depict whether or not these factors influence Alberta's climate. Latitude affects the climate of the province as Alberta is located north of the equator and along with the rest of Canada results in colder temperatures. Ocean currents do not affect the climate of Alberta as it is not bordered by any large bodies of water such as an ocean and therefore its climate is quite varied without the ocean currents to moderate it. Winds and air masses do affect Alberta's climate as air currents blowing from the Arctic can produce very cold temperatures in the winter. Nonetheless, in the summer, there are continental air masses which bring in hot winds to Alberta. Elevation does affect the lands of this province, but only partly because the lands of this prairie province are flat rolling plains. However, there are many mountains on its western side that alter the climate. Where there is elevation, the temperature will vary. Where there is not, the temperature is constant. Relief affects Alberta's climate as it is influenced by mountains of the Western Cordillera, which block the flow of westerly winds, causing them to lose a lot of moisture and cast a rain shadow over the province. Being located on the leeward side of the Rockies, Alberta receives much less precipitation and experiences drier climates. Alberta is not located near any large bodies of water, and so the climate ranges quite widely. Soils and Vegetation Alberta is a near-equal mix of three soil regions, wet climate soils, dry climate soils, and complex soils. In the wet climate soil region, leaching occurs, which results in the unsuitability for agriculture in those lands. Under dry climate soil conditions, however, it is more ideal for cultivating crops. 
The dry climate prevents soil nutrients from being washed away. Soils in the complex soils region vary depending on factors such as relief, elevation, and climate patterns. Regardless, farming can still occur, especially in the rich soils of the valleys. Vegetation Alberta is made up of grasslands, cordilleran vegetation, and boreal forests. Grassland vegetation produces the best soils for growing grain crops as the thick layers of humus form from dead grass enriches the soil. In the Cordilleran vegetation region, there is a wide variety in everything, such as dense forests on the lower slopes, alpine meadows, and tundra vegetation near the mountain peaks. In the boreal and taiga forest, there is a noticeable domination of coniferous trees, specifically white and black spruce, pine, and balsam fir. The further north the trees are, the thinner the trees and the smaller the area covered, and vice versa in the south. Significant Water Bodies as you know, Alberta is one of the two Canadian provinces that is not bordered by a large body of water. However, there are still many water sources in the province that are of importance. Lake Athabasca is the largest lake in Alberta, with an area of 7,850 square kilometers. It is best recognized for its importance as a waterfowl production area. This lake also provides a wealthy abundance of fur-bearing animals, large and small game, and plenty of fish. National Parks If national parks are what you seek, then Alberta is just the place for you. Alberta is home to five national parks. Banff, Jasper, Waterton, Wood Buffalo, and Elk Island. Natural Tourist Attractions Banff National Park a destination where rocky mountain peaks, turquoise glacial lakes, a picture-perfect mountain town and village, abundant wildlife, and scenic drives come together. Lake Louise, world famous for its turquoise lakes, the Victoria Glacier, soaring mountain backdrop, palatial hotel, and incredible hiking and skiing experiences. Icefields Parkway and the Columbia Icefield. The stretch of road from Jasper to Lake Louise is dotted with more than 100 ancient glaciers, cascading waterfalls, dramatic rock spires, and emerald lakes set in sweeping valleys of thick pine and large forests. Moraine Lake. Its waters are the most amazing color, a vivid shade of turquoise that changes in intensity through the summer as the glaciers melt. It is surrounded by mountains, waterfalls, and rock piles, creating a scene so stunning it almost seems unreal. Drumheller Around 75 million years ago, various species of dinosaurs inhabited this region, and many fossils have been discovered here as well. Natural Resources Alberta is home to an abundance of natural resources, such as oil sands, oil, natural gas, coal, minerals, tenure, and electricity and renewable energy. Alberta has large coal, oil, and gas deposits in the western sedimentary basin, which covers most of the province. Its oil resources have been heavily exploited. Energy companies have undertaken large-scale development of the oil sands in northern Alberta. The area, also known as the tar sands, is a source of great wealth for the Canadian and Albertan economies. Current events in the news Throughout 2020, the ratio between wildfires and house fires have changed drastically as more people are at home due to the ongoing pandemic. However, there was one particular wildfire known as Devil's Head Wildfire that burned uncontrollably in West Calgary for days. According to Alberta wildfire officials, it was caused by an abandoned campfire. At its largest size, the wildfire was at 3,624 hectares. Now, how does this tie into physical geography? As we know, climate change is slowly taking its toll on the earth, and we are left with the aftermaths of our own treacherous actions. The air has become increasingly dry, and the situation is more dire than ever. This change in climate can cause unrelenting heat waves, droughts, and less rainfall, which can result in more forest fires. To conclude, Alberta certainly has much to offer from its abundance of natural resources to the jaw-dropping natural tourist attractions. In this video, we have covered all of Alberta's physical characteristics and recent news events. We learned how the land came to be through millions of years of geologic processes. I hope this video has provided you with a better understanding of Alberta and will convince you to travel here one day. Thank you for watching.